With Canada introducing student caps, the big question is, which province should you choose to study in Canada? Well, let's talk about it. And make sure to watch this video till the very end where I share how to choose the best province for you. Let's get started. First things first, let's be real for a second. Nobody wants to live in small cities. Everybody wants to go to Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, maybe Ottawa, but those small cities, no thank you. And this article confirms my words. As you can see, the most popular provinces among international students are Ontario, British Columbia and Quebec. And I gotta be honest with you, the cap in those provinces, it's gonna be real. Those provinces will be the most affected ones because everybody goes there. If you're planning to study in Canada and then stay, work, get your permanent residency, don't forget that getting a PR in those provinces is super competitive. It might be a good idea to move to another province, study there, get your work experience, get your PR, and then move to your dream city of Toronto or your dream city of Vancouver. Or maybe even study in Toronto, see how you like the city, and then go somewhere else, get your PR, and if you absolutely love the city, you can always come back. As for Quebec, I've said it many, many times, and I will say it one more time. I love Montreal, I love Quebec, but immigration is a pain in the ass, especially if you don't speak the language. And if you don't speak the language and you're not planning to, just don't waste your time, don't go to Quebec. Because if you want to stay in Quebec after your studies, you will need to take a French exam. And the level they're asking is B2, C1, which is like uh, advanced, pretty much. And if you speak zero French, well, it's gonna take some time for you. Been there, done that, so keep that in mind. However, there is one type of students who can get into any province because they're not affected by CAP, and those are graduate students. Postgraduate students are exempt from the CAP, so if you are one, you have nothing to worry about. And if you need help with securing your spot, you might want to know about HELP. HELP is a trusted study abroad platform for international students like yourself. They support both students who are just planning their studies and students who are already in Canada. For students currently in Canada, HELP offers free guidance to help with extending your studies or maybe switching to a different college, university, province, you name it. And that free guidance includes a free lawyer, which is chef's kiss. HELP has helped thousands of students, bachelors, masters, to get into Canadian DLIs, get their study visas, and move to Canada and pursue their studies. If you are a graduate student, I think now it's time to act because there is no cap. Also, the provinces are working on those provincial letters, meaning IRCC, they're not that busy. They're gonna be busy April 1st. When students get those provincial letters and then they start applying for study permits, if you are a graduate student, apply now. HAL specializes in fields like healthcare and everything related to healthcare, nurses, vets, optometrists, dentists, like anything related to health. Social and personal support workers, agriculture, agri-food, transportation, STEM, IT, business, skill trades, and MBA. If you are interested in MBA, now is your time to apply because while well, master's programs can be already full for this year, MBA still has some seats open for 2024 intake. And if your major is not on the list, don't worry, don't worry, HALP can help you too. So why should you choose HALP? First of all, HALP has close relationships with colleges and universities in Canada, so they can get letters of acceptance for their students in as little as 24 hours, up to five, seven days, which is super fast. Secondly, they are free, they don't have any hidden costs or anything. You just pay for your registration fees, your tuition fees, you do not pay HALP anything. On top of that, you get a free immigration lawyer. I mean, by signing up for HELP, you'll be saving at least two, three thousand because lawyers in Canada, expensive. HELP has a 90% acceptance rate, meaning HELP students are top quality and universities, colleges love them. And 90% of those students, they get into their top choice universities and colleges. And again, HELP only recommends what's best for you, what you have in mind. When you sign up for HELP, you'll be like, my end goal is this, I wanna study this, these are my provinces of choice, these are my universities of choice. And HELP helps you to achieve those goals. They're not gonna push you towards the university that pays the most commission. No, no, HELP is thinking about you. It's like your bestie for studying in Canada. Before you apply, you should know a few things. First of all, HELP is reserved for serious students only, meaning students who have their documents ready. So if you're planning to study in 2024, you should be already having your IELTS exam, transcripts, 
and for signing up for HELP, you will need your passport. After you sign up for HELP, you will get a phone call where the HELP team verifies everything. So make sure to have a valid WhatsApp number so they can call you. And you should provide HELP with the documents that I've mentioned before, your passport, your transcript, your English exam. And if you have all those documents ready and you're ready for apply, you can scan the QR code that you see on the screen or you can use the links in the description box down below and sign up for HELP today. And if you have already used help, let us know how it went. And let's go back to the main question. What provinces should I look at if I wanna make sure I get that study permit, I move to Canada, I study and enjoy my life? My personal opinion that you should be looking at provinces that are not as popular as Ontario, BC, Quebec. For example, Saskatchewan. And you might be thinking, ooh, cold, Yulia, but like, we don't wanna do that. Listen, listen. Saskatchewan's economy is driven by agriculture, mining, energy, and technology sectors. Meaning if you wanna study any of those, you should be looking at Saskatchewan. Some of the in-demand jobs include engineers, architects, advertising, accountants, optometrists, and much more. The province has relatively low unemployment rate, which is good, meaning you will be able to find a job. And the growing industries offer a lot of job opportunities for newcomers and international graduates. And if you want to save some money while studying, well, Saskatchewan is a good place to be because the cost of living, it's much lower than, again, in Ontario or in BC. And we're not talking only about rent, but also utilities, bus passes, you know, daily expenses. You can find many DLIs in Saskatchewan, University of Regina, Saskatchewan Polytechnic, and other colleges and universities located in the province of Saskatchewan. As for immigration, that's the best part. You can work for six months after graduation and then apply for your permanent residency. In other provinces, you will need to work for a year. Here, it's cut in half. But not everything about Saskatchewan is perfect. First of all, we have weather. If you're not into cold temperatures, no, no, Saskatchewan is not for you. I think Saskatchewan's climate can be hard to adapt to. So if you can't tolerate the cold, no, no crossing it out. Saskatchewan is one of the Canada's sparsely populated areas and some rural areas can feel isolated, especially for those of you who are used to urban living. And of course, the major cities, Regina and Saskatoon, are relatively small compared to Montreal, compared to, you know, Ottawa, Toronto, Vancouver. So if you don't mind a smaller city with less things to do, then Saskatchewan will be perfect for you. Next on my list is PI. PI is just gorgeous. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. PI is known for high quality of life and beautiful landscapes, as well as the affordable housing. Again, the cost of purchasing a home is generally lower compared to many provinces in Canada. Despite the small size, PI is driven by agriculture, fisheries, tourism, and aerospace and bioscience. So if you wanna study those and then get a job, you need to be going to PEI. PEI offers quality education. You have University of PEI there that offers great opportunities for both undergraduate and graduate students. Again, you have relatively easy immigration with provincial nominees, with Atlantic programs, so it's not gonna be as competitive as in Ontario, for example. As for the downsides, PEI, small, very small. The whole province of PEI is the size of GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. But the population of PEI is 156,000 and the population of GTA is uh, 7 million. All right. Despite the efforts to diversify the economy, jobs in certain areas can be limited and can be really hard to get. As always, I think it's a good idea to do your research before even applying for college or university, because if there are no jobs, why move there? I mean, unless you want to move somewhere else later, but as a person who moved three times, super stressful. The next province on the list of the best provinces for students is Nova Scotia. Again, high quality of life, affordable housing situation. And I know many people's gonna be, but Halifax is not affordable. Yes, but then again, if you look at Vancouver and Toronto, Halifax is affordable. Again, you can go to smaller cities and live there for cheaper. So it's always a matter of, I think, priorities. If you don't mind the commute to Halifax, for example, you can find really affordable housing options. Nova Scotia is 
known for a variety of different immigration programs from the construction pilot to international students in demand to international graduate entrepreneur streams. I think those provincial programs are much easier to get your PR through. Nova Scotia has many DLIs to choose from and if you want to study arts, Nova Scotia has the best art school in Canada, I think, which is the Nova Scotia College of Arts and Design. Again, when choosing a smaller province, you need to be aware of the job situation over there because spaces can be limited and while some students go specifically to Atlantic Canada to get their PR, other people can't find jobs in the Atlantic region. But also, climate in Nova Scotia can be harsh. Also, I think I say it for every single province of Canada, let's just put it that way. Canada is cold. If you're expecting it to be like Portugal, don't. Don't come to Canada because it's going to be cold anywhere you go. Yes, in BC it might be slightly milder, but generally speaking, cold. Canada is cold. Moving on to New Brunswick. Again, New Brunswick is a great option if you don't want to be affected by student cup. You have a bunch of universities to choose from that offer PGWP, which is the postgraduate work permit. You have great PR opportunities because it's still Atlantic Canada and Atlantic Canada is perfect for immigration. And the housing again is really affordable compared to major cities in other popular provinces. And New Brunswick is Canada's only bilingual province, which can be good for some and bad for others because if you speak French, you'll be perfect, but if you don't, yeah. Again, New Brunswick's economy is smaller and resource dependent compared to other provinces in Canada, meaning some sectors might have limited job opportunities. So how do you actually choose the best province for yourself? Well, you need to be looking at several things. First of all, start by considering slash evaluating your job prospects. As different provinces offer different job opportunities. If you know you want to study agriculture, check what are the jobs, what's the demand, like what's going on. Unless you want to study health-related sciences, I feel like Canada has a shortage of healthcare workers. You can study anywhere and you will find the job instantly. The only thing about healthcare is in some provinces you might need to get special licenses. So if you study in Ontario and get your papers in Ontario and then you go to Quebec, Quebec most likely will ask you for some kind of like, you know, attestation or whatever. So keep that in mind. The next thing to do is to check PR options available to you and kind of evaluate your chances. If you want to stay in Canada after your studies. Next, think about your lifestyle preferences. Do you want to live in a smaller city, in a bigger city? Because I know many different people who move to different cities for many reasons. I know people from large cities choosing smaller cities, more rural areas, because they're so tired of those megapolises. But I also know people from big cities moving to big cities because they're like, I don't know how to live in a small city. Don't forget to think about that too. Also, if you have family, if you have kids, maybe you don't want to be downtown Toronto because like, why? You want to be somewhere closer to, I don't know, nature maybe, maybe a little bit further from the city. And don't forget about the climate, even though I've said that Canada is pretty cold, cold is different. I come from Siberia and the cold we have there, it's dry. Cold in Montreal is humid as hell. When it's minus 10, it feels like minus 20, 25. So you should be also thinking about those things. I spoke to a friend the other day and she was like, oh, I was okay with winters in Montreal until I moved to Toronto. The degrees are pretty much the same, but then it's like super different. So don't forget to do your research on weather in Canada. Next, you need to be looking at healthcare, education, cost of living and housing options. Again, if you want to invest, you know, and live downtown, that's one thing. If you want to save some money, you might be looking at smaller cities. Also, if you want to live in a big city, chances are the lineups for hospitals and everything, they're going to be bigger and longer and you might need to wait for like, you know, months, maybe even years to get your family doctor while if you move somewhere, you know, to a smaller neighborhood, city, whatever, it might be easier for you to access those things. I have two friends. One lives in Montreal center-ish. She was waiting for her family doctor for like, I don't even know. Another friend moved to the east of Montreal. She got her family doctor in six months because that area, it's not like highly populated. There are no 
big lines for the doctors over there. So if you have a condition or you have kids, keep that in mind too. Again, don't forget to consider your cultural and language preferences because again, if you don't speak French, you don't want to learn it. Don't go to New Brunswick, don't go to Quebec because you will have a hard time. I mean, if you stay in Montreal, maybe you'll be fine, but then you have this Bill 96 where you have to speak French. So evaluate those things too. And ultimately, I think the perfect province, like it doesn't exist. For some people, it's Manitoba. For others, it's British Columbia. It always comes up to you. You should be making that decision based on your wants and needs and not based on what you see online. People saying, oh, Ontario is the best. Well, it might be the best for some people. For example, for a family without kids, they live in Ottawa or in Toronto, they like having fun but like a family with kids, they might as well live somewhere in British Columbia where they can easily go hiking and like, you know, snowboarding and skiing or whatever. So please don't be fooled by that information that you see online. Take it with a grain of salt. And yeah, I think this is it for today. If you move into Canada, let me know what is your province of choice and why. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.